All right, uh, welcome back to episode 67 of the Quantum Science Seminar, which today will be all about magnetic molecules. As always, if you have questions, please send us your questions to quantumscienceseminar at gmail.com or use the YouTube live chat at the right or at the bottom of your screen. Please also note that, as always, there's a 30 second time delay between what we do here on Zoom and what you see as live on YouTube. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Costanza, who will introduce our speaker today. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm really glad to have with us today Roberta Sessoli from the University of Florence. Roberta developed her career at the University of Florence, where she's full professor since 2012. She played a key part in the original discovery of single molecule magnets. These are a broad class of molecular materials that exhibit magnetic memory and quantum effects. The seminal discovery opened up an entirely new field for scientists toward nanotechnologies in general. Her current research interests include the interplay between magnetism and chir chirality, magnetic molecules on surfaces for spintronics, and molecules with highly coherent spin dynamics for quantum information. For her scientific achievements, she has been selected as a member of the Science and Technology Advisory Council of the President of the European Commission. And she's also appointed as a member of the Academia Nazionale dei Lincei, of the Academia Europee, and of the European Academy of Science. Roberta received as well numerous and prestigious prizes, including the Gonzalez uh, Chamisian Prize of the Spanish Royal Society in uh, 2020, the Centenary Prize of the Royal Society of Chemistry in 2019, the Distinguished Woman in Chemistry Award from the IUPAC in 2015, the Leco de Bois um, Baudron Award from the European Rare Earth Society and the Agile and Technology Zero Physics Prize in 2012, in 2002. Um, Roberta also received the, has been awarded the ERC Advance Grant in 2010. So we are really looking forward to your talk and uh, the stage is yours. Thank you, Costanza. Thank you, Sebastian, for so Costanza for the nice introduction, and Sebastian and the other the organizer for for inviting me here today. Um, as you can see from my slide, and as you have heard from Costanza, I am a chemist, and I I would talk a little about chemistry, but I hope to anyhow to attract your interest and just to stimulate your curiosity about what. Uh, magnetic molecules can really bring to the field of, uh, uh, say, of quantum sciences. Um, as it has been told before, there will be, a, I will just uh, uh, divided the talk in a sort of three parts, and the questions are welcome at, uh, in any moment, but probably they will be delivered to me by our organizer when I will make this sort of, uh, of break. Of course, I want to start, okay, so here for the most important slide, which is this, which is the slide of uh, acknowledgement. Uh, what I'm going to present are, of course, results taken over many years by many people, students, uh, postdocs, uh, collaborators, co-workers, and so on. And I'm particularly uh, indebted for the talk that I'm going to present today to the uh, Professor Stefano Carretta of the University of Parma, who's really an active player in the field of uh, magnetic molecules for quantum sciences. Um, of course, there are also uh, the, the support for um, funding agencies that you can see on, on the right. Okay. Uh, I, the title that I've selected is not about quantum application, but more about quantum nanoscience. I'm not really in deep inside the uh, quantum algorithms, quantum, uh, quantum logic and things like that. But uh, I think that molecules have, uh, it, 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 even if they are very uh, much less investigated than other platforms for quantum uh, information science, they have a, a, a pro, and the pro is uh, related to that dimension, which is intrinsic nano-sized. And all the properties that I will show to you will actually 
are uh, retained at the uh, molecular level. And so they're really uh, usable in, in uh, also in nanoscience. Uh, I just uh, recommend you this, uh, this review or perspective where the different type of platforms that can be scaled down to the nanometer size, sorry, I'm just, has, have been, uh, have been uh, uh, say just uh, discussed with their degree of freedom, with their typical length and uh, time scales. And I hope that you can find the reading, if you're interested in this, uh, in, uh, this talk, you can find this reading uh, useful for that. Okay, I do not have to, to spend too much time with you about uh, the spin on a block sphere. The spin is the typical uh, uh, say two level system that uh, can be, uh, can express all the quantum properties. But if one refers to magnetic molecules, one has immediately to, uh, to, to divide them in two classes. The first classes in, I think, in a language which is more, uh, more uh, familiar to you are those molecules which have a long spin lattice relaxation. So they have a long T1, so that actually they behave in a certain sense as a classical memory with a zero and one state. But the zero and the one state are intrinsic of, uh, of the molecule. Why uh, to why a molecule can uh, be used as a classic memory. It can be used as a classic memory if there is a barrier that hampers the, uh, the reversal of the spin. And in order to have this reversal of the spin, we need to have a potential barrier. This potential barrier, which is highlighted here, it is just the magnetic anisotropy and comes in the very, very simple, the simplest way with this very, I would say, um, uh, quadratic Hamiltonian in the spin term, where the D, which for us is called the zero field splitting, is simply related to the spin orbit coupling and the magnetic anisotropy of the molecule. Of course, as you have seen from, from the, from the uh, animation, you have discretized level, and this discretized level, you can uh, go from one side of the double well to the other side of the double well with a thermally activated process visiting all the levels, or you can go with an under barrier process, which is called quantum tunneling of the magnetization. Just to give you an idea of how the, uh, the, the um, classical and quantum behavior, even if still not coherent, but just quantum effect, can uh, uh, manifest. One can, uh, for instance, look at these uh, simple molecules. You will see a lot of balls. The balls, the big balls are the metal ions. In this case, are iron, uh, metal iron ions, iron three. The smallest one usually are oxygen, nitrogen, which are coordinating the metal ions. And then you have a backbone made of carbon atoms that connect these, what are called the ligands. Okay, when one has the, the possibility, the, the, a, a, a potential barrier due to an isotropy, but which which is quantized in level because the spin of these molecules is larger than that of an of an, of a ion, but still I say a small number, and these level are well discretized. One can get the possibility to put levels on opposite side of the barrier, either in energy coincidence. For instance, in zero field, as the, uh, the, the anisotropy is d as z to the square, the, the, sign of the, the, the sign of the projection doesn't matter in energy, so they are degenerate. But you can also apply a, a, an axial field, a field along the z axis, the quantization axis, and the levels are brought out of resonance. With that, you can easily tune the efficiency of the under barrier process. And there are some special, some special level uh, values of the magnetic field that bring back the levels on the opposite side of the, uh, of the potential barrier uh, in energy coincidence. So the tunneling can be either on or off depending on the magnetic field. This has really made 
the, uh, increase the interest of physicists on this type of system because you have the very easy way of tuning the quantum uh, behavior of the molecule. How can you see it? Well, this is something that you will see more. It is a, in a magnetic hysteresis loop typical of an ensemble of molecules or taken many times, making a time average of the same molecules, uh, where you have a magnetization. If you apply positive field, you have an, a, a positive magnetization. And then the hysteresis, the, 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 when you go to negative field, the magnetization drops to negative values, but with, with, with steps, and these steps actually occurs at the level where there is this energy level matching. You can see here that the measurements have been done either on a solid, so on a crystal, many molecules. So one could say, well, the molecule feel each other. Well, but if you diluted the molecule in a diamagnetic host, the behavior is retained. This means that actually the, the property is an intrinsic of the molecule and is not related to intermolecular interaction. This is important because this means that we can transfer this molecule with a specific property to any other type of, uh, of say, of environment. And uh, I would just make here an example. And the example that I will make is the evaporation of molecules on a superconductors, just on a surfaces, on a surface of a superconductors. While I have selected this, because I think there is a lot of interest in superconductors in quantum science, say in quantum information science. To do that, of course, we do not rely only on chemistry. We have also some physical methods like evaporation, and we have to do it in ultra high vacuum in order to control the cleanness of the surface so that the molecule is directly in contact with the, with the for instance, in this case, with the superconductor. Um, the way in which we, we investigate the, the very tiny amount of molecules that we can find in a monolayer on a surface, which means that you have reduced dramatically compared to the crystal, the quantity of molecules is to rely on magneto-optical techniques. But the magnetic optical techniques that we, we employ is mainly uh, based on X-ray. Why we use X-ray, and in particular, we use X-ray at synchrotron facilities, because we have a very tiny amount of the elements of our molecules that is carrying the spin, and we have an, an enormous amount of other of other, the mass of the substrate. By, do, by using X-ray, we, we address core levels. So we are very selective, specific to a, 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 a particular um, atomic species. What is even more important for us is to be sensitive only to the surface, because of course, we could have in the bulk, also the same impurity, the same elements of our molecules, maybe as an impurity. But there are a special way of measuring X-ray absorption, and uh, that is just looking at the, um, at the secondary electrons that are emitted. And the second electrons that are emitted, the OJ electrons, are, um, uh, say, attract uh, current from the ground, and what is really measured here is the current that reestablishes the neutrality. This is called the electron yield. As only the atoms that are excited very, very close to the vacuum can uh, really release the electrons to the vacuum, uh, can be provide these, uh, these, uh, um, uh, these uh, electrons to reestablish neutrality, we are sensitive only to the, say, to a couple of nanometers on top of the surface. We can use circularly polarized light or linearly polarized light. See, with circularly polarized light, we have a moment, an angular momentum. And with this angular momentum, we can prove if the, if the, mole, uh, if the um, orbitals are spin polarized and get information about the magnetics. Uh, we can also go down in temperature, even if we are in working at very 
uh, in ultra high vacuum condition and under in an electron, a photon flux, which is very strong, that of a synchrotron. Okay, so what experiments we have done? The molecule that I've shown you before that has this hysteresis, but has also this quantum effect in this hysteresis can be deposited on lead, on the surface of, of the 111 surface of lead. You can see here an STM images that has been taken in our laboratory where the molecules have been nicely packed in an hexagonal lattice. And uh, uh, you can go to a, one of the synchrotron, for instance, the one in France, Soleil, and you get a magnetic hysteresis. The magnetic history is a little more noisy, of course, than the one I have shown you, because, of course, you are dealing just with a tiny amount of, of atoms. Mm. And, but, of course, they, they have the typical, the, 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 the typical temperature behavior. You increase the temperature, you provide some uh, thermal energy, and the hysteresis closes because they the, the spins can cross the, uh, the, can cross, uh, the barrier. However, there is a difference. I don't make the full story, just to give you a hint about the, the, how this molecule can be used. There is a difference if one works on gold on the, uh, here on the left or works on lead. And you can see there is a difference in the magnetic hysteresis. I'm just focusing here on this internal part of the hysteresis because lead, in, it is a superconductor with a small critical field. So, only below 0.08 Tesla it is a superconductor. So the, the white zone is where the, the, the lead is, is, is a superconductor. But what do you would expect on a superconductor? Well, of course, we have different possibility. If it is a normal state, the superconductor, I have the, 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 the magnetic field uh, flux line that can invest my molecule, and my molecule would be out of resonance and quantum tunneling will be off. And I expect that I just have the drop when I am in zero field, because only in zero field I have energy coincidence and quantum tunneling is on. But if, the, if, if I am on a Meissner, in the Meissner state of the superconductor, the superconductor shield the magnetic field and my molecule is in, the, in, in, a, in a situation where it can really tunnel uh, very, very efficiently. However, if the lead will, will behave with a, an, an abrupt transition from the normal state to the superconducting state, I will expect that the system is demagnetized because I am in zero field and I have quantum tunnel. However, you see that the experiment is a little more, is a little more different from the, these two models. And this simply because in a superconductor like a classical or say type one superconductor, there exists an intermediate state where we have both um, normal state and superconducting state. And what changes is not the flux in the normal state, but just the dimension of the two type of domains. This, it is just a sort of didactic example because this is something which is known uh, but it can be, I say, de detected indirectly by looking at uh, the tunneling of our molecule on top of the superconductor. And indeed, by using this intermediate model that we already know it's appropriate for this superconductor, we can nicely reproduce the hysteresis group. So this is what, what is the idea? The idea here is that a technique like XMCD cannot be employed on superconductors because we do not have this information coming out from the electrons, but we can use what is normally done, you deposit a layer of ferromagnetic materials on top of a superconductor. But a layer of ferromagnetic materials relies on a, co on a correlation length, which is large. Why here we rely simply on the size of the molecule. So we have a, a probe which is just sensitive to the local field uh, um, that the molecule is experiencing. So this was just an idea that I wanted to, to show you. If you have looked at the, at the temperature, the temperature to which the, the, the hysteresis was observed is below 1K. To store an information below 1K is absolutely out of any, say, appealing, technological appeal. There is no, 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 no way. 
uh, if we want to increase the temperature with, at which we can store the information in the molecule, we have to go to higher uh, magnetic anisotropy. And you all know that uh, the magnetic anisotropy is very important in a part of the periodic table, which are the four F ions, so the, the, the lanthanides. One of the features of the lanthanides is that uh, their 4F electron is quite internal and shielded by the, uh, the outer uh, orbitals. So their interaction with the surrounding is mainly uh, ionic. It's not completely true, but one could say that it's mainly ionic. This simplify a lot an aspect which is crucial for me, which is the design of the molecule. This, I think, is something that you should try to, to make the effort to, to understand because it's really important for the design of material if you're interested in magnetic properties. Here you see how it is the electron density for the different angular momentum projection of the J levels for the different um, uh, lanthanide ions and for the different projections. Some of them are more, say, oblate. Some of them are more prolate. Some of them are very unusual shape. The idea here is that if we place the, the, the ligand charges, the negative charges of the ligand, and here I refer to the coordination bond, which I hope you have retained from your chemistry classes. So you have a negative charge of the ligand, which interact with the electrons of the metal. Uh, it is uh, obvious that uh, the, placing the, mol the, the, the charges, the negative charges on top of these, uh, uh, of the, uh, of these flattened um, uh, um, uh, electron density stabilizes it compared to places the same negative charges on these electron density, which points directly to the charges. So placing charges ab above and below a dysprosium three ions stabilizes a very large uh, angular uh, momentum projection of the J value, which is orbital plus spin. On the contrary, if I go to another ion, like for instance, a erbium ion, you see here that now there is a, this protrusion of electron density. So now if I put an, a charge, a negative charge here, I do not stabilize this, this uh, highly magnetic state, but I stabilize uh, a less magnetic state. With that, we can in design our molecules to uh, increase significantly the anisotropy barrier. The first idea is that the best way to have just charges only in one direction and just pin the spin in that in, uh, along the z direction is to place it on a surface. And this is actually what has been done some years ago with a single atom on a surface exhibiting this magnetic, magnetic memory. Again, it is used uh, by, by XMCD to detect it. But one can also detect it with some other technique, for instance, by using a scanning, scanning probe microscopy. A scanning probe microscopy is a very useful tool in quantum nanoscience. However, has a measure issue. The measure issue is that the signal that we detect rely on electrons that goes from the tip to the surface or vice versa, depends on, on the bias you apply. This, of course, is making a lot of, uh, uh, is strongly affecting because we, we add an electrons and these electrons modify the spin dynamics. However, we can rely on proximity effect. And for instance, one can use an atom to store the information and a neighboring atom to read the information. In this case, there is no uh, uh, no current going through the dysprosium. And one can see that uh, the, 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 these dysprosium atoms have their magnetization, which is stable on a surface up to 15K. Not yet room temperature, but of course, a lot, just an increase. Molecules, of course, this is very, very demanding to have just one single atom sitting on top of an oxygen of a magnesium oxide layer and so on is complicated. As chemists, we like 
to make it more easily or at least rely on the fact that molecules do their job by their own, so they are intelligent material. And here you can see the, the, the molecules which behaves like uh, um, magnets up to more or less around the ni liquid nitrogen by simply, I would say, putting the charge inside, I would say, a, 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 a ring, well, not, not just one atom, but more atoms. This is what is called organometallic chemistry. Um, we, I just want to mention here that now the anisotropy barrier is extremely high, but the, but the behavior of the dyna spin dynamics doesn't follow the Arrhenius law, the thermally activated uh, mechanism, the Orbach mechanism, but there are some other mechanisms, in, in particular Raman, and I will come back later on this, on this topic. Of course, you can be more clever in chemistry. You can try to make these two negative charges more aligned and the hysteresis increases and increases. And if you couple two, this is a fantastic work. If you have the occasion, look at it because it's really modified the periodic table in magnetism. These are two lanthanides, two dysprosyl ions, which are coupled by in electrons. And now what has happened is that the hysteresis is farther increased. Here we have coercitive field of the order of 15 Tesla, much, much more of any neodymium, boreum, samarium, iron uh, magnets that you can have in your uh, wine mill. But, uh, when, but the real interest here is that this Raman process has been suppressed because now we move two spins at the same time. And when we have two, a two-body uh, dynamics, the two-body dynamics um, is much, I say, uh, is much less uh, probable, and so it, uh, it, it, the Raman mechanism is somehow reduced. I would stop here about this memory to go towards coherence. If you have some questions, I'm ready to answer too. Um, thank you very much, Roberta. Yeah, we, we do have a few questions. Um, it's very interesting so far. Thank you. Um, so I have some, some general questions that um, we've collected and then some more specific ones. So um, the first question is about the, the general motivation um, of what you're looking at here. Are you normally trying to sort of get at the properties of individual molecules or is it more sort of asking about individual molecules to sort of build up to a picture of understanding sort of, you know, collected, okay. you know, molecules in a, in a, in a superconductor? Okay. This is a little more related to the past in the sense that, uh, mm, uh, the, the investigation of this type of molecules has really added a lot of understanding about how matter and, and particularly spin in solid state behaves uh, at the nanoscale. Um, and uh, as far as the application, of course, each molecule could be a memory, and this would completely, I say, uh, revolutionize the, 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 the size because you are go very, very little or even atomic. Of course, it is very hard to, to read and write this a single uh, molecule. And at the moment, we are not yet in the uh, 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 having the right temperature. So I would, uh, um, I, I would not consider as a viable application because for memory, the, the technology is already so mature. But I think that so there can be some application and in, for that I, I, I wanted to present this data because you can think about having a very local field generated. It is a little the example before that I've shown you here. So uh, let's suppose that you are working on a, on, a, on a Josephson junction and you know that if you apply a magnetic field, the magnetic field will invest all the magnetic junction of the circuit and there will be some cross talking. But there you can actually have a, a very fine control of the, of the spin of the molecules with uh, and uh, so depending on how it is or uh, how it is placed and uh, we are also working at the use of electric field but i'm not have the time to talk at, at this so electric field can actually 
um, control the spin of a single molecule, and uh, they can be screened, it can be uh, localized at the molecule level. So not for real application, but in, in principle, they are interesting for new hybrid platforms. I think that this could, is probably the, 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 the application of this type of molecules. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. Um, so the next question we, we had was um, involved sort of working with molecules on surfaces. And the question is to what extent the surface sort of changes the properties of the molecule. Um, so there are sort of two sides to this. First, do you yeah. have to uh, a particular yeah. surface for a particular molecule? And to what extent are you always looking at sort of just physics of the molecule? And to what extent is it sort of surface science as well? Of course, these are complex molecules which are rely on the coordinate coordination bond, which is uh, weaker than the covalent bond. So some type of surface destroy the structure of the molecule because the ligand, for instance, interact with the metal. Mm -hmm. Usually we on, on a thin layer of oxide or graphene, um, silicon carbide and so on, they are quite, uh, quite uh, safe. Uh, sometimes we also, it is, uh, you will see later an example where the molecules do something to the surface. So we have a mutual interaction, but the, 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 the interest can be also in, in this. But in general, we have to be careful and uh, control the interaction with the molecule. Um, thin layer of oxide are the coupling layer that usually prevent any type of re re chemical reactivity. Awesome. Very interesting. Um, so the next question we have was sort of uh, going to the temperatures of these um, of these experiments because you said that on one of the slides um, you noted that um, that the temperature was around forty millikelvin. Um, so we guess that's the temperature of the of the cryostat in which these things are, are being cooled. Um, and, uh, and, and if so, we're sort of wondering to what extent the, the sort of spins that you're looking at here are always sort of thermalized with the, um, with the temperature of the, of the cryostat, or are there things either, you know, in general or during the probing where, um, where you actually have sort of a separation and the spin doesn't okay. thermalize okay. with the, okay. the, the rest of the... I have to, to, to say that, uh, okay, um, some cry, <laughs> there, there is a, a, around 300 milli K, there is very difficult to see a difference in the behavior of the molecules, which can be either that you have completely raised, uh, achieved a, a quantum behavior, or actually we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, thermalize uh, more our molecules. I, mm, I'm not working really in the milli K, I'm working in the hundred of milli K and that this, no, we see, we can, we can easily, especially if they are on a conducting on, on a metallic surface. Uh, it is not the same if, for instance, you work in vacuum and you cannot work on a, on a bulk oxide. In that case, it can become a very, very hard to, to thermalize. But on, on metallic surfaces or where the bulk of the surface is metallic, we have a good thermal content. So, so that sort of answers the, the next question we had on the list, which is, are the cryostats cold enough or would colder temperatures be, be beneficial to your, to your research? I guess from what you're saying, mm -hmm. hard I would say or... that at the moment, uh, no, I expect for the fact that uh, very, very low temperature can be useful to polarize uh, uh, nuclear spin and electron spin. So, uh, of course, working with the spin, if we rely exclusively on the Zeeman energy, we know that the Zeeman energy is small. And so we have to cope with that. But as you will see in the following, uh, we are trying to devise, uh, as it has been done and with other quantum platform, to avoid the use just of temperature and magnetic field to initialize and to polarize our system in, 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 a, in a selected state. It's very interesting because you, you, you keep giving also in your answers sort of almost asked the next question I had on the list because the next question on the list was uh, do you always have to work with, with spin polarized molecules? And if so, how do you spin polarize them? So I guess the second part you've, you've answered, do you always work in a spin polarized regime? 
Well, of course, we have to control the spin then to make any. So we have to control it. The problem is, uh, do you have to control and to, if especially because there is a, a sort of debate about magnetic molecules in the sense magnetic molecules are the ideal platform where ensemble measurement mimic a single molecule. So in a certain sense, what has been the, 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 the fortune of, the, of this uh, research is that one could have the physics of the isolated object without needing to work on one object. If you work on nanoparticles, if you make a device, if you think about the Kane, uh, Kane proposal of the quantum computer, if you displace an atom here or that, or the defect is here or that, it will not be identical. Why here the molecules are practically identical. So if ensemble molecules need to be to be used, of course, we will need to have them initialize all the, and in that case, polarization is very important. Otherwise, it's not so crucial. I don't know if I have an answer to. You know, that's, that's, that's an excellent answer. Thank you. Um, it, it sort of feeds into the, the next question that we had, which is um, uh, what are the typical T1 values or sort of states sort of switching? Okay. The time T1, uh, T1 for this molecule can become at low temperature, a, a very, I say, of the order of the, not the age of the universe, but at least the patient you can have to keep your molecule cold at that temperature. So, uh, so it can become extremely, extremely long, uh, the T1, or if you engineer the barrier and you completely uh, try to cut the, uh, the under barrier mechanism. The under barrier mechanism is particularly cut if you work with many spins, molecules which contains more spins so that their collective motion relies on a perturbation and the spin phonon coupling occurring with, on, on several sites at the same time and the multibody, I say, interaction. So it can be, it can be very, very long. Okay, this is very nice. Um, so maybe just one more question and then we can um, um, sort, of, sort of go on with things. That is, um, we we're wondering um, what is a good fig figure of merit to characterize the memory effects when you've got the sort of quantized um, hysteresis and the magnetization? Um, is, the, is the area of the, um, of the hysteresis plot um, sort of a good you know, um, way to characterize that? Or is there some other particular figure of merit that you of normally course, use? No, of course we can, in general, we can rely Okay, if you want to have the memory, it would be nice to get uh, no quantum effect because this cut the memory. So we rely on the uh, coercitive field uh, magnetic uh, re mag um, remnant magnetization product, which is typical of all magnetic materials. So the energy product in a certain sense. Um, of course, the quantum effect is something that is interesting because uh, in the, in the memory market, one of the problem is to have memory that are stable when you want that they are keep the memory, but also easy to write. And so quantum effect can be the switch to, uh, to, 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 to make it uh, easily uh, um, uh, writable. In this sense, we have not succeeded in I would say in really interacted with a, with the classical memory market technology and just trying to make use of this uh, uh, type of switch. At the moment, you you know that, for instance, the the, the um, what is the company, the big company in, in the U.S. and in Ireland, uh, Seagate. They use this laser, just this laser pulse, this thermally assisted writing for, for accelerating the writing. Mm, it has remained a, an idea, but not yet developed. The use of tunneling to promote, uh, to, to facilitate writing. So, so that's very interesting. So thank you for that. Um, I'll, um, I will let you continue for the moment and uh, collect some more questions for, the, um, for the, the, the next question break. Okay, so I can continue. Yeah, please, please, please go ahead. Okay. okay, so now we go to another type of molecule. So in a certain sense, they have some similarity about the chemical design, but 
some difference compared to the previous one. In the previous one, we wanted a large spin orbit coupling. In, if you want instead to have a long coherence time, you have to protect our spin from the uh, noise, from the surrounding, from the uh, variation of the electric fields, uh, the charges that moves, the vibration, and so on. Uh, so we'll see that we have some, some, some difference. Um, concerning the platform for realization of a quantum bit, of course, uh, coherence time is uh, what is necessary. This is the, is, is the prerequisite for, for any other uh, type of application. But I would say that we com our, we compare, we co I'll say compete with uh, other type of spins, which are quantum dots, but in particular impurity uh, spins in uh, semiconductors or, or insulators. If one looked, for instance, at the very well-known uh, uh, um, nitrogen vacancies deficit in carbon with their fantastic spin one with very long coherence time and very easily uh, manipulation with light, one would say, okay, uh, this is a simple lattice. So if I look at the phonon dispersion of, of uh, uh, diamond, well, it's a little more complicated of a prototype of a molecular qubit. Here you see a V, the V stay for vanadium, is a vanadium four, so it is a D1. So it is just one unpaired electron residing on the metal atom, which is surrounded by this ligand. You look at these, I have more atoms in the cell, so I have more, more optical modes, but I think that what is really necessary to compare is on the, on the uh, epsilon scale. And you see that if I use the same scale in the molecules, all the phonon mo modes that you have seen before collapse where there is nothing in nitrogen vacancies or in, or in diamond. Why this? Because we are relying on van der Waals interaction in a lattice, in a soft lattice for the molecules. So this is, this is uh, of course, an issue. And uh, the problem is that at this very, very low energy for this very soft material, the phonon modes are not much known. And so we have been, uh, uh, well, we wanted to verify that our um, theoretical tools can actually predict the phonon dispersion of molecules. And to do that, we have employed the inelastic neutron scattering and uh, on, on uh, these type of molecules, the, mole the small molecules I've shown you before, these are 42 crystals which have been co-aligned just to make the one gram, which is necessary for an, for an experiment on, uh, with neutrons, one gram of deuterated materials. But okay, a very, very big experiments. There were people betting that we couldn't uh, succeed because to align all this crystal, but we succeeded. And here you can find on top the experimental dispersion curve and on the bottom, the calculated one. And this is, of course, you cannot uh, perform all the, the experiments on every type of material because it's very difficult to deuterate the material. It's very difficult, very time consuming, but at least we have tested that the um, DFT with the, the Grimme, D3, Grimme D3, Van der Waals dispersion correction and so on are quite reliable. And this is something, sometimes you have to make this type of investigation just to, just to, uh, to, to benchmark the tools that we uh, commonly use. Why the vibration are important? The vibration are important because just take one term of the spin Hamiltonian. I'm just taking the Zeeman term for simplicity. You can have the uh, hyperfine term as well. And in order to understand what a vibration can do to the spin system, we can we compute, but not at the DFT level, but post artifact level, we compute, and this is the fantastic work done in Trinity College by Alessandro Lunghi, uh, the, how much the, 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 the spin Hamiltonian parameters, for instance, the G, value, the G factor, the G tensor, changes by displacement of the atoms. And by doing that, it is then possible to compute how much a certain vibration affect the, uh, the, the spin lifetimes by affecting the terms on the spin Hamiltonian. 
Here it is just a little to summarize uh, the, the results of the neutron experiment. Here you can see the dispersion curve, and here you can see what is the nature of this, uh, uh, this acoustic mode here, and uh, when you are close to the gamma point, or when you move far from the gamma point. You can see that the fact that we have this optical mode, which are quite close in this type of material, has an important effect in hybridizing, in admixing uh, with, the, with the acoustic mode. So in principle, one thinks the acoustic modes just move the, the, the molecules rigidly from one uh, uh, without affecting what is the, the geometry around the metal ion. No, it is not the case because actually we have some admixing. And here you can recognize it by seeing how much they couple the vibration in the different Brillouin zone, how much they couple with the, uh, with the spin system. So uh, this is uh, something that we have to, to, to cope with. So because as I've told you before, these molecules have a lot of vibration. Okay. So up to now, it seems that molecules have only uh, side effects compared to other uh, qubit platforms. But one of the advantage of the molecule is that we can use different uh, spin system with different dimension of the Hilbert space. And for instance, if one use a gadolinium three plus, and now why gadolinium? Gadolinium is four F seven, no orbital momentum, so no huge magnetic anisotropy, so good coherence, not, not exceptional because it is in a heavy atoms, but good coherence. And it is just shows very small zero field splitting, small anisotropy, which is the one that allows us to differentiate the different um, uh, energy of the transition between the spin levels. These are, of course, the the, 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 the levels of this, uh, the, uh, of this eight, uh, eight by eight uh, Hilbert space, but at the same time, they can be seen as a three qubit system where you can go from one to another, seem, well, only changing uh, uh, one, the one qubit state at the time. So it is a, what are called the qubit, and the qubit can increase uh, just with one center, you can have a, a much more transition and much more degree of freedom. Or you can have two, two gadolinium in the same molecule. And this, in this case, you get with 64 by 64. So it, it looks like an eight, uh, eight qubit uh, uh, system. And here are just, uh, this is not my work. It's the work by Fernando Luis in Saragossa. And here you can see the Rabi, the Rabi frequencies between the different type of, the different 64 levels of this, of this space. So this is something that is typical of molecules. You have also the nuclei, because the nuclei inside the metal ion well, or, or the spin inside the, 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 um, uh, the, nu uh, the nuclei of, of the paramagnetic center is in most cases a resource. I don't have the time to go, but there has been a fantastic work done by Wolfgang Fressdorfer before in, in Grenoble, then in, uh, in Karlsruhe, where they have used as the computational basis, the four level of the, of the terbium spin, nuclear spin, and they have used the electrons just to talk, to, 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 in, to initialize, to manipulate, and to read out. The, uh, the electronic spin, the, the nuclear spin. The same, this is uh, another nice work, not of me, but by Stefano Carretta, with whom we are also collaborating, about embedded error correction in the, um, in a, um, using the electronic spin of a terbium ion and using at the same time the four levels of the, of the nuclei. However, in order to make use of the nuclear spin, this is something that I want to point out. We need, we, hyperfine interaction is not sufficient because if you have Zeeman and the hyperfine interaction, we just get all, that, all the transition that falls at the same frequencies. In order to distinguish between the different 
uh, transition of the nuclei, we need to have a quadrupolar splitting. Quadrupolar splitting usually goes with spin orbit coupling. So it's very high with heavy, <coughs> sorry, heavy elements. And so this uh, hampers the use of light elements that we prefer because they have a low, small spin orbit coupling. And so the spin is weakly perturbed by the noise. We have demonstrated that it is not necessary to, ne to work with strong, with heavy elements, but also light elements like vanadium, which is one of the elements that have the smallest uh, quadrupolar splitting, can have a quadrupolar, an effective quadrupolar splitting if one works at low magnetic field. Because in that case, the spin, the electronic spin, one half, and the seven half spin of the nucleus, they are not factorized and they result in an admixing of, of the state and in a pseudo or effective quadrupolar splitting. So here you see the Rabi oscillation taken in a, uh, with a NMR, in NMR experiments on these magnetic molecules. It is the broadband solid state single crystal NMR because actually one looks at the, uh, at the levels uh, in, a, in a single crystal applying the field in a certain specific direction. And at the same time, one can also have the same Rabi oscillation taken by the uh, of the electronic spin so we are at the same in the same field and in the same field we can manipulate both currently both the electron spin and the nuclear spin and this is something that is quite uh, peculiar and can also be done with this type of molecules in general we know that uh, this nuclear spin especially if it is in the matrix it's very detrimental. This is just a literature report about the uh, um, outperforming properties of uh, um, phosphorus defects in silicon if silicon is 28 silicon instead of the natural abundance of 29 silicon, which is uh, magnetic and nuclear magnetic. Uh, it's known for everybody. We have, of course, a lot, many atoms, we have different species, but in some cases it is possible to remove most of, I would say, of magnetic nuclei. And for instance, this molecule, which is again contain the same ion, D1 vanadium, but these yellow are sulfur, the gray is carbon, mainly non-magnetic non from nuclear point of view, no hydrogen, and this is good, no deuterium, this is good, no nitrogen. And the, you can see here that uh, the T2, if also the, the matrix doesn't contain protons, it's quite good because it is of the order of the millisecond at, uh, at low temperature. Nuclear spins, actually, they are quite difficult for us because, of course, we have a lot of hydrogen everywhere if you work in chemistry. However, there are two types of nuclei which go, do a different job because we have the, 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 the nuclei which couple with the, with the spin strongly, but these are relatively little detrimental. What is really detrimental are the, 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 those spins which can exchange, which can um, interact with the bath. For instance, just to give you an idea, if I have some, let's consider here that I, here I have my, my, my spins, my electronic spins. If the nuclear, magnetic nuclei, for instance, the protons are close to the, or sorry, there is a, are close to the, to the magnetic uh, center, they have a, a, a Larmor frequency, which is very different from those of the bath. And so, they do not exchange, they do not flip if the bath flips. So there is a sort of magic or say frozen sphere where the, the, the protons are not uh, so uh, detrimental. And this is something that it has been nicely demonstrated by making chemistry, but I want just to give you an example 
uh, it is a collaboration. We are working a lot on this type of molecules, which are called organometallic or metallocenes. Now the, uh, the metal ion is titanium three plus, again, a D1, a spin one and a half, very light element. You can see here that this molecule has a T2, TM, of the order of, I would say, well, about 50, uh, 50 microseconds at low temperature, which is not bad, considering that we have a lot of hydrogen atoms. The reason is that all these hydrogen atoms that are here in, the, in these molecules are inside this, uh, let's say, this frozen sphere. And this is demonstrated easily if one investigate the molecule when it is diluted in a, in a similar molecule, but with no electronic spin. It is a titanium four analog. Now we have a collapse, oh, sorry, we have a collapse of the, of the coherence. But why that? Because now we have plenty of hydrogen and these are not within the frozen zone. However, if you work at the single molecule level, this is a very highly protonated molecules with, I, I don't know if it is true in every type of, of platform, but for us, 50 microsecond, 100 microsecond is a little the limit to achieve enough, uh, enough coherence to make operation. If we go much below 10 microseconds, then the coherence will hamper the use of microwaves to control, to control the spin. So this is quite interesting. Just to give you an idea coming back, you say, but where is the nano? For instance, the molecule that I have shown you before uh, uh, belongs to a class that have been used recently as a, as a sort of sensor that can be I'd say captured on top of an STM tip. And then by making spectroscopy and looking at the magnetic level of the molecule on top of the tip can be used as a sensor of what is happening on, 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 on the surface. So the idea that the molecule is portable is one, of, I think is one of the key um, strong, um, strong advantage of, of this type of platform. They have a lot of say of cons, but they have some pro. And this portability is, it, it, for instance, has been demonstrated here. Um, okay. Um, for instance, the same molecule that I've shown you before, I will go quickly because I think there is not a lot of surface scientists working here. The same molecule that I've shown you before can be deposited on the, uh, on the surface. You can see here the STM images and actually can be stuck on the tip. And here, <coughs> sorry, is how you see a silver atom with atomic resolution if the molecule is on the tip. And you have also these, uh, these uh, say, uh, in the spectroscopy, you have this peak, which is called the condo peak. That means that the electrons interact with the spin of, of the molecule. If the molecule, it is released, then the tip lose its sensitivity, but now sees the molecule as a ball. And again, it sees also the spin of the molecule on the surface. This is just, uh, just for curiosity. I want just to, to, to tell you something about how molecules can interact with surface or can influence uh, uh, surfaces. Um, the same can be done with this type of molecule, but uh, for simplicity, I will go to uh, a, a, a manuscript that is already published so that you can actually retrieve. This is the molecule again with vanadium that you have seen before. Here are these pro their properties, T TM, T2, and T1. Okay, not, not exceptional, but good. Okay, no, nothing interesting, nothing new compared to before. What happens if a spin one half of a molecule is put on top of a superconductor? It is uh, well known that this, if there is an interaction between the, the spin and the Cooper pair of the superconductors, this can really break the superconducting pair and can give rise to states which are called the yushiba rusinov states. Um, I am not working in that direction, but there is a lot of interest about spin chains on 
superconductors to construct topologically protected or uh, Majorana, Majorana states uh, on superconductors, which is not my field of research, but I know that the possibility to modify locally the, the, the wave function of the superconductor is quite interesting. Okay, if we deposit this molecule on the superconductors like we have done at the very beginning, you go and this molecule is a little strange because it has an oxygen on one side, so it can just land with the oxygen up or with the oxygen down. And you can recognize because in STM you see the orbitals and the conductance is different for the two type of absorption geometry. The molecules retain its spin one half. It can be seen going to, again to a synchrotron, now SRF. So we know that it is a spin one half molecule on the surface. However, if one makes some spectroscopy with the STM, one realizes that when the molecule lands with the oxygen pointing up, the spectroscopy is the same on the molecule air or far from the molecule. What does it mean? It means that what you are seeing here is the energy states of, and the gap in the energy state of the superconductors. Exactly, so the molecule is doing nothing. However, if the molecule is landing with the oxygen down, now there is a coupling. Why? Because this oxygen is interacting more with the, with the lead. It has a small spin density, and this spin density can interact with, this, with, the, uh, with the Cooper pairs of the superconductors. Even more interesting, this is just a curiosity, is that, you know, in an STM, you can work by, uh, uh, I say, by, if you, in, to increase the current, you have to, uh, uh, to put with a, your, your motor, your uh, piezo, piezoelectric motor, you have to put the tip closer to the substrate. If you increase the current, you also decrease the distance between the tip and the molecule and the substrate. At a certain point, the tip start to modify the geometry of the molecule. And one can see that at the very beginning, if the molecule is in, in its rest position, there is no coupling with the superconductors. If you go down, there is coupling with the superconductors. And this is quite, uh, was, it has been simulated by uh, a small distortion of these vanadium oxygen bonds that change the symmetry of the orbitals. And then there is a, some delocalization of the spin density in the, in the superconductor. So there is also a way of, controlling the level of hybridization between a molecule, the spin of a molecule, and the Cooper pairs of a superconductor. And I think this is something quite new and quite interesting. I am finished for the part about spin, small spin and coherent spin system, if there are questions. And then we can jump, we can also finish and I will leave out, but the very last part is very short. It is about the use of light, but I can also avoid to mention that. I... Um, so, so thank you very much, Roberta. It's uh, really fascinating. And um, uh, in terms of uh, exactly you know, how to finish this, that's, uh, that's up to you. Um, but we'd be happy to ask a few questions now if, if, you're, um, if you're okay with that. Um, so uh, one of the um, well, one of the questions we sort of had is you know about different potential ways to address these these um, these molecules if they're on a surface or indeed uh, you know embedded within a crystal, and sort of wondering to to what extent if you put multiple molecules on a crystal um, you can address them individually. Um, is it always just done with the with STM tips, or are there other ways to to address um, different molecules if you have multiple ones on one surface or in in one crystal? Okay. <clears throat> well, in a crystal, one could actually rely, there are some old proposition about using a gradient of fields to, to have the, the, uh, the alarm or frequencies or the resonant frequencies vary. Up to now, I have not, uh, not uh, um, seen experiments done in this direction. So all the all the experiments that address the sing at the single molecule have been done in um, either 
in a junction under an STM tip or in a junction like a broken junction, so in a, in a nano junction. So, um, well, uh, cavities, can we achieve the coupling with a single spin uh, optical cavity? Like for instance, super, I'm not talking of that. Uh, because it's not really my focus. I have a lot of collaboration, but it's not my research. But we have also experienced some uh, uh, strong coupling with photons, uh, the gigahertz, microwave photons in, in cavities, but always with many, many spins. Uh, shrinking the dimension of the, uh, of the cavity, uh, but... Uh, no, I think we are not yet, uh, we still rely on the confinement of the electric field at the moment. I don't know if there are optical means to go to single, <laughs> to single molecule, but this is a matter of collaboration, it's not, uh, it's not actually my, my, my research field. Yeah, so, so that was going to be my next question, whether there were um, you know, ways to optically address these, but I, I guess you, 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 you answered that in your, your previous answer. Um, the next question we had is, um, uh, you mentioned that um, one of the interesting things, whether you're thinking about sort of, you know, QDITs and, you know, manipulation of quantum information on a single molecule, um, or, you know, more generally the interest in the, these systems, uh, is that you have, um, you have sort of a lot of degrees of freedom, so you can make sort of, you know, high dimensional QDITs on a, on a single molecule. Um, what I was wondering is to what extent that means that the, that the frequencies with which you control um, sort of, you know, different operations, if you like, between different degrees of freedom start to get closer and closer together as your molecule becomes larger. We sort of see this, for example, in, in ion traps where, um, where the, you know, the frequencies with which you drive the motional modes as you add more ions that come closer together, it becomes harder to manipulate them and everything has to be done more slowly to be, um, to be selective. Do you have the same thing um, when you're dealing okay. with these larger molecules? I would say that we are a step behind in the sense that uh, the um, traditionally uh, magnetic resonances are done with commercial very i would say very powerful very i would say well uh, performing uh, commercial instrumentation which are the the the, the, the standard and uh, in a certain sense we rely a lot on cavities and on a single frequencies uh, on on a single bridge that provides the the the, the frequency so uh, we are just starting to try to really implement multi-frequencies, uh, pulses, so that we can uh, manipulate this spin. And one thing that is important, and this is why at least our research, chemical research, is that we need to start from well uh, oriented matrix um, systems. So uh, we need to have the, uh, the, the to man, retain the coherence by decoupling, so make an ensemble measurement of isolated molecule, but at the same time isolated, but all uh, equally oriented. And uh, when you want to go to, to a large uh, Hilbert space, it becomes difficult to find exactly the same chemical environment because it is, uh, uh, any metal ions like its own particular geometry. And if you eliminate one electron going in another <laughs> square of the periodic table, then you have a, diff a slightly different chemistry. So it is something that requires also a lot of chemical um, engineering, but it is something that uh, our community is trying to do, there are some laboratories that are really developing this multi. And also the idea is we are working on ensemble and in cavities, you have to have a frequencies that stays, however, so that they can all be operative, operated in the same cavities. And the planar resonators at the moment are the one that appears the most, let's say most, most uh, promising, mm -hmm. superconducting, or high TC uh, superconducting resonators. Yeah. 
Um, so, so what is the um, what is the perspective um, then of maybe thinking about doing these experiments also at higher temperatures? So, you know, not millikelvin temperatures, but could you are there, are there ways potentially that the spins that you're interested in can be engineered so that maybe they decouple somewhat from their environment and you can do these closer to room temperature? Or? Okay. Well, in principle, in principle, I would say that if you do not the, the problem is the reading out. The, the, the coherence can be retained even at room temperature. So uh, the problem is to optimize the readout, the single model, because at the high temperature, you do not have an, a very powerful initialization. So you have to rely uh, on, single on single spin detection. Single spin detection has other problems. So it is a, a sort of, uh, of, uh, of, say, of a circuit uh, of problems to solve. But in general, we do not need the, the spin um, below 10k. They are more or less uh, have a same spin dynamics. There is no interest in going below 10k, and many of them can be even investigated at the room temperature. The coherent uh, they are still going in echo, and you can see the Rabi oscillation at room temperature. It's very interesting. Um, so we have a, a couple more general questions, but I think maybe the best thing would be if you finish up the, the talk and then we'll um, we'll save the um, the last couple of questions. Okay. If you have anything else, we get to the end. Okay, so I want just to very, go very, very, very quickly to another another topic, but however, it is one of the topic I am now, and so I'm happy if I have also a feedback. I do not have to spend too much on this slide because I think all of you know how by uh, by photo exciting the nitrogen vacancy centers in diamond you can have an intersystem crossing and selectively populate a singlet state and this gives rise to a preferential um, a population of the MS equal zero state of the E1 uh, um, of the S equal one of the of, of the nitrogen vacancies. You can even do more and actually also uh, polarize the nuclei of the of, of the nitrogen, which is quite uh, quite fascinating. Um, can we do something similar in with molecule? Not me, but uh, someone that probably you know in the field, which is David Avshalom, now in in um, and, uh, in Chicago, no, in uh, Evanston, uh, in collaboration with the Dana Friedman. Uh, they have actually Dana Friedman. She's the chemist. She has actually devised a molecule which has the right uh, the right uh, um, spin state and uh, orbital uh, uh, orbital uh, lead, uh, energy ladder to have something which is similar to a nitrogen vacancy and they have been actually able to demonstrate uh, that they can either detect the spin of the molecule or they can also initialize this the, the, the molecule in the MS equal uh, uh, MS equal one state uh, by using light. Um, what I just want to 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 to, to mention here is that the, both methods really have as a preferential uh, initialization state uh, the MS equal to zero because this is clearly distinguishable from the other because it, it is only the, the only state which will, which can, con, can be connected with the singlet state. However, that is not easy to, to control the polarization in the sense of, uh, uh, of a, a sort of no reciprocal properties in a certain direction. So it's not possible to control the MS plus one or the MS minus one in respect of, a, uh, of the direction, for instance, of the magnetic field. The idea here uh, is to use a completely different phenomenon. And this phenomenon is called chirality induced spin selectivity. It has been shown by many experiments that the electrons that travel through in a helicoidal mean uh, have the transport, I would say, the, the, the probability of, tra of uh, motion, let's call it velocity, um, uh, which depends on the 
orientation of the spin in respect of the chirality and in respect of the motion. Why that? Well, the idea is that uh, the electrons that moves in helicoidal potential feels an, feels an effective magnetic field. Uh, well, the theory is still to be fully developed. It has been shown that if one uh, modify the, the chirality of the, of the material, it is the opposite spin which is favored. Of course, where the, how the spin moves, how the electrons moves depends on the bias you apply. Um, in principle, this has no, this phenomenon doesn't need any magnetic field. So this selectivity exists independently of the magnetic field. The magnetic field is used to see the effect. In which, in which way? Well, if one magnetizes the reservoir of electrons, for instance, a nickel substrate, only one has an unbalancing of spin up and spin down. And so the currents that goes through the, that goes through the, uh, through the, um, through the um, circuit depends if the, the movement is favorable for that spin or not. And this is why they are observing different conductance as a function if the magnetization is up or down. So here, nothing, sorry, nothing is reversed, only the magnetization. And what it is observed is that the current is different. Okay, the idea here is a little, well, what, there are plenty of effects that couple magnetism with Special, special inver uh, say breaking of special symmetry. Let's think about uh, multiferroicity. Most of them rely on spin orbit coupling. I would say all of them rely on spin orbit coupling. So the idea is that this effect is strong if one has a spin orbit coupling. If, the, if one uses a device like that, there is a strong spin orbit coupling on the electrodes but not on this, because this type of what I have drawn here is an oligopeptide, so carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, a DNA molecule, so it is an organic molecule. It is something completely, well, very, very light elements, very, very little spin orbit. And what it has been observed is that the spin filtering depends on the length of the chain. So it seems that actually it is this part which plays an effect, and this is quite intriguing because little spin orbit coupling, a lot of spin control. No spin orbit coupling is the hard to have get spin control. So we have started a collaborative work first in Italy, then we have proposed it with uh, with a group in uh, uh, of researcher in uh, in. Um, Northwestern University, Berlin, uh, Weizmann, and so on, because Ron Naman has been actually the the the, the uh, the, the discover of this uh, of this phenomenon, and the idea is: can we just check if the phenomenon exists in without the spin orbit coupling of the electrodes? And how we can do this? How can we try? Okay, can we check if the electrons are transferred with the preferential spin? The idea is: sorry, is to use is to use light to excite a molecule or one part of the molecule, which here I call a donor, because it has uh, the tendency from its excited state to transfer the electron to the acceptor. And of course, this is something we know, it happens many times. I have plenty of molecules, dyads of donor acceptors, our, uh, say our solar cells uh, use a lot of this type of, of, of system. However, how to check if the spin that arrives on the acceptor is spin polarized and how it depends on the, on the chirality? The idea is to use microwaves and to use EPR spectroscopy. Actually, the, the idea here is that if you go to the Yablonsky diagram for very simplified, we have uh, the acceptor donor. We excited it either to a singlet or to the triplet. It can be some intersystem crossing goes to the triplet. And then you can have the electron transfer. 
However, when the electron when the electron is transferred, the the the, the, the it recalls or reminds the 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 the, 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 the co spin configuration of the beginning, and what we end with is a non-equilibrium distribution of the uh, population of the spin population on the four levels, because now we have a radical here, a radical there, a spin one and a half here, a spin one and a half there. They are inside the same molecules. They see each other, and so we have a singlet and a triplet. And this population of the singlet and triplet is out of equilibrium. How we measure this out of equilibrium? With a time resolved DPR, so we have a uh, detect the absorption after that we have triggered a, a, a laser pulse as a function of time. And this is done for any field. And so we get a an EPR absorption as a function of the field, but also at the same time as a function of the time. Of course, at the end, there will be no more, um, uh, no more uh, signal because we have also recombination of the two radicals. They will go back and the electron, back electron transfer will cancel the signal. But we have a, a, a measure of how the spins are polarized inside these, because of course we can have some, some lines in, uh, uh, in absorption, some lines that are in emission. And mimicking them, of course, we know how is distributed the population. The idea is that cis actually modify this spin population, because I just get only one spin on one side, only one spin on the other side, if I have 100% spin filtering, and this must be detectable, or at least we think it is detectable. We have done some very first experiments. I will go very, very quickly. It is a quantum dot as a donor. The acceptor is a fullerens linked by a, a, a polypeptide chain. These excited states are suitable for making this electron transfer. And we have made the experiments with the cadmium selenide functionalized with a fullerene or cadmium selenide functionalized with something typical or similar, but the fullerene is not chemically linked. If I start from the chemically uncoupled uh, system, what I get with after irradiation of the uh, cadmium selenide quantum dot is the typical full uh, spectrum of the excitation because unfortunately the fuller end absorbed everywhere. So we also get the triplet state of the fuller ends, which has this typical spectral feature, nothing new. If I, I use instead the fuller end, which is bound to the cadmium selenide, we see this extra peak. And this extra peak is the electron, which has gone to the, today. So it has been an electron transfer. This electron transfer has occurred on a long aliphatic chain, which is an idea that maybe cis exists and is present and is detectable. The idea is why all biology or say all life is based on these helicoidal molecules is that also because electron transfer is favored in a helicoidal structure, in a chiral structure, because one spin is favored, but the back transfer is unfavored. And before the electron transfer go back, the electron goes back, the spin must be reversed. And this pump the electron and make the electron travel in one direction, even if you are not applying strong bias only by chemical potential. So this is the idea that this, this cis effect is very important because it is also the basis of many processes, many electron transfer processes, including the biological one. These are the experiments we have performed. Fortunately, we have collaborated with Stefano Carretta and the theoreticians in, in Parma that have done this nice simulation. It's uh, um, Emilio Macaluso who has done this work. And the, 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 you can see that if the, if the quantum dot 
has its density matrix where it's just populated the singlet state, we will see a difference in the spectrum of the Fuller N. If it is no Cs, no spin filtering or spin filtering. But none of these two resemble our experiment. If the quantum dot is excited in the triplet state, uh, so different density matrix, again, there is a difference between the no cis and cis effect, but again, no similarity with our experimental results. If the quantum dot before we have electron transfer equilibrate in something which is more or less is, either, is, is an average of singlet and triplet, we get a, a result which is similar to what we have observed, but unfortunately it is not detect, it is not sensitive and it is not able to detect this cis. So a lot of work with the half results, we have been able to induce electron transfer through a chiral, with light through a chiral bridge, but unfortunately the quantum dot and the photo excited state of the quantum dot is not optimal for this fund, for this uh, uh, type of, uh, well, to observe this phenomenon. If the, the phenomena we are able to demonstrate that the phenomenon is there and we can man manipulate that, the idea now is to use light to, to transfer the spin with a certain uh, just polarization on an acceptor and then use microwave to transfer the the, the information to a quantum bit that can be placed close to our uh, to 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 our acceptor. So the idea is to 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 make a sort of intramolecular spintronic and having the possibility to control the polarization of the spin, just circumventing the issue of the weak Zeeman interaction. And now you will be able to orient the spin, not just the MS equals zero, but populate just one state of the, of the, of the qubit. So that's all from my side. Just a very quick conclusion. I hope you have liked these molecules as a sort of school of physics for, for magnetism and quantum. I think that I have transmitted the idea that the the, the, the beauty of molecules is that they retain their properties and that you can move from one environment to the other. However, as you see, we are in, at least in quantum application, we are a step behind and that in order to make the best use of what molecules can bring to the field, a communication cross fertilization with the community is mandatory and so this is why I am so thankful to the organizer to having given me the opportunity to talk so much about chemistry today that probably will not have any chemistry to give this talk for the next uh, for the next I say year or months so thank you again for your time kind attention well, thank you very much, Roberta, um, for the really nice introduction to this area. Um, it is great, and as, as a person who's come more from atomic physics, it's, it's really great to see this from the perspective of chemistry and, and what you can do with these molecular systems. It's really, really fascinating, and thank you for that and for the, the beautiful results. Um, we have time for a sort of a couple of um, couple of questions still, and um, so we thought we'd ask a couple of the, um, the sort of bigger questions about where these things are, are sort of going. Um, so the first one sort of is, you know, so in terms of where this field is at the moment, what do you see as the sort of the opportunities and the, and the challenges now of moving these sorts of platforms towards really, you know, coherent operations where you have multi-qubit operations, maybe even sort of, you know, interactions between um, qubits stored on different molecules. Um, where do you see the sort of the, the next steps in that sense? Well, I think that the, the, the real issue is to achieve a way of controlling the single, the spin at the single molecule level, because um, I say 
Ensemble measurements are nice. They provide us a lot of information, but of course you have also some inhomogeneity. So you, what you get, you get this rabbi oscillation that decay very quick. Well, they decay quickly, not because the TM decays, but simply because uh, they, they, they feel the cavity and the cavity is not so, so homogeneous and so on. So this is, a, this is an issue and uh, the, uh, this is why I am so pushing the, the, the idea of a hybrid. We have to exploit uh, the, 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 the advantages of other platforms. I don't think that you can rely only on molecules, but molecules can do something interesting. And uh, uh, I think we have maybe the community working either in superconductivity or in in uh, uh, with photons. I don't know atoms and uh, trapped ions. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't seem so <laughs> easy. Uh, in terms of sort of even if have... today I can, uh, I have seen some ideas about coupling. Um, I say mechanical and uh, and uh, trapped uh, trapped atoms, and so maybe mechanical can also be influenced by spin. So it can be some, but still in the still far to achieve. Do you think in the future it might be possible to to trap you know one or more of these these size molecules, for example, in optical tweezers to sort of maybe isolate them from a surface and, and manipulate them in that? I have no ideas, but this would be really fantastic, I say, <laughs> because actually I say you are, you are doing something with the terbium ions, but of course you could do with uh, you have plenty of more levels in. in in other type of molecules no yeah i don't i have no idea sorry <laughs> happy, um, happy happy to discuss but no idea at the moment and um and just sort of finally you know again maybe in terms of these hybrid things of that you know um what are you think the first opportunities that people are going to take you know in trying to indeed get these more coherent operations of a single large molecule is it a matter also of looking at different molecules or is it really this sort of question of um, finding new control techniques or ways to hybridize it with with other systems I would say that most of the community is really trying to 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 um, to realize, uh, to realize, uh, for instance, quantum simulators. Quantum simulators are a, a one of probably one of the closest applications because, of course, uh, our complex Hilbert space can mimic many many uh, situations. And so, I've seen that we have done a collaboration with the IBM. I, for uh, for me, it was just the, the idea of. What, which chemical ingredient could be put there, but it seems that there is a, a certain interest. So in that case, it could be at the level of, a, of an ensemble, you don't care too much, that is just to, to, to have the, the, the apparatus to excite all the different levels and to mimic all the different parameter space of your quantum simulator. So this is uh, probably the first, the, 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 the more reachable and therefore also the more investment. We are a little more on the, on the hybrid part because we are, do a lot of surface science and nanoscience. Very nice. Well, um, with that, thank you again very much, um, Roberta, for the, the really you. nice presentation. And I'll um, pass back to Sebastian for the, the final word. Yes, thank you also from my side, Roberta, for a very cool uh, and uh, sweeping overview of a, of a big field. Uh, we will take a break in August and we will be back with another seminar on September 1st with a talk by Nicole Younger Halpern. And if you want to get notified about what we do, please go to our website, quantumscienceseminar.com, subscribe to our email list and our Google calendar, and you can follow us on Twitter as well. We thank you for your interest and we hope to see you again on September 1st. Same time, same place. Bye now. Bye bye. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Grazie.